is it. And that is it. I also need to mention artillery. So in this game, you have access to cannons. You have access to huge artillery cannons on the field, but two field cannons you need to um have to have certain conditions you need to hire some cannoneers from the tavern this is easy you go to the tavern and you will always find yep cannoneers in here you talk to them and you hire them besides that you also need to have in your inventory certain types of items you need to have cannonballs you need to have uh Cannons, which I'm not seeing here. Maybe the, the nope. Goods vendor. Do you have any cannons? Come on, any cannons for the boys? No. That's lame. You'll usually find them in the arms mer merchant section or the uh, goods section. You'll also sometimes find them in the guild section. You need cannons, cannonballs, and gunpowder in your inventory. And once you have these. Uh, they will spawn on uh, the battlefield. You can't move them, but they'll keep on shooting the enemy, and they'll seek out the enemy and keep on shooting. You also take direct control of a cannon, but I recommend that you stay away from it. The cannons are still buggy, but if you want to play around with them, go for it. But I'm going to tell you right now, they're not worth the investment. A, I think a cannon is a round 10k cannonballs are around how much were they 535 that's not too much gunpowder is around 1k um the salaries of the cannoneers are not that big of a deal but again they're not useful in battle and they bug out super super easily but for role playing purposes you can play around with them and try them out so that's it for artillery uh next up i'm going to be talking about battlefield abilities so yes there are abilities in this game that you can utilize during uh during fights and this is why i recommend people to um invest into in an intellect character because it really really helps with most abilities that you're going to be having during battles uh let me just go ahead and fight against that mountain bandit we're going to get in battle against them or those guys it really doesn't matter Okay, charge the enemy, and I'm going to show you a list. Let me just arrange everybody here. I'm going to show you a list with uh, all of the abilities. Archers, sit up there, please. Infantry in the front. And this is usually what I do. I put the infantry in the front to in a shield wall formation to defend the enemy. I tell the boys to stand closer by one and then just shoot in. So to see a list with all of the abilities, you press the, was it the Z key? Yeah, the Z key. And these are all of the combat abilities that you can access by utilizing the numpad on the right side of your keyboard. So we can rage. That's gonna give us plus five power strike and plus five power throw and plus five agility. Lasts for two times the strength in seconds and you really need 14 strength to utilize that ability. Uh, so if you have 14 strength and you utilize that ability for 28 seconds, you're going to have those bonus combat stats. You have focus. Uh, that's going to give you plus 10 times your intelligence to weapon proficiency. So if I have 14 intelligence, that's going to give me a whopping 140 uh, weapon proficiency plus 5 agility to my weapons. That is insane. Especially since I have 30 intelligence, that's going to give me... 300 uh, weapon proficiency on my weapons. So, you know what? Look at that speed. That's how fast you reload with an extra 300 proficiency. Of course, I can't shoot for shit. I can't hit for shit because I'm too far away, and guns are usually a close quarters type of the type of weapon in this one. Uh, but you get the idea. You have sprint. That's going to increase your agility, um, your agility by fifteen. Uh, whistle for a horse in case you your horse has run away from you. You can whistle for a horse. Uh, first aid. That's going to treat your own wounds. So that's going to heal your ass in a battle. 
my god um, and it, it costs experience it costs experience if i use that i spend 350 experience but i gain 48 hp so that's amazing okay what else do we have uh inspire troops inspire troops will heal not just rally your wounded troops will heal your troops around you a certain percentage of their hit points based on your leadership and charisma morale shock you practically um make a fearsome cry and make the enemy run away from you you also have taunt in case you want to take the um, want to take the pressure off of your troops and a defensive wall if you have a gabions in your inventory you can build a defensive structure around on the battlefield but they're pretty much useless sorry rose i know that deadly patrick is giving you a very hard time but there's nothing i can do man you just have to tell him to piss off i guess and that is it for abilities the ones that i use the most is the healing one healing myself and but you can just go ahead and use all of them if you so wish to also they have a one minute cooldown so you can't spam them you can't spam them you, they all have a one minute cooldown be aware okay but it's still it's still pretty op and pretty bo broken okay oh my god um that, i'm tired I'm, I'm super getting tired here um now let's talk about um, mod options and difficulty. And once we talk about mod options and difficulty, we're going to talk about the early game, mid game, and late game, and exactly how to conquer the world. So let's see. Political world map. I think this is pretty. Yep, it's pretty as fuck. Good. So. Take an option. Uh, take an action. Select books to read. Rename. No, nothing from here. Options. Okay. Change autosave options. This uh, will simply deactivate the fact that you um, that your game saves each time at the end of each week, at the end of each budget week. Fix for disappearing parties. Well, of course, keep this on. Change amount of town walkers. This is for immersion purposes. Enable flag bearers. I usually keep this off because flag bearers are useless. They don't fight, and they're just cannon fighter, and they're gonna die. Disable dynamic gear. In case you didn't know, time passes incredibly fast in this game because you start off before the 16th century, and each day that passes added, adds another year to the game. And then once you reach uh, by 1,695, the game slows down, and there's a normal calendar, normal time. Change technological advancement speed. This is for the AI. Change artillery settings. So this will um, disable or add more um, cannons, uh, cannon limit to the AI because the AI can also have cannons. But I never got hit or my man got hit by an enemy cannon. It never happened, sadly. So, you know, you can do that with, with that information, whatever you want. A uh, fight at colony, not fort. So if you have the um, extended, the warband script extender, you can fight at the colony that you've built. But it's it's super buggy, and not fight at the fort that was automatically built by upgrading the fort. I recommend that you just fight at the fort. Don't fight at the colony. Reload customizable uh, kingdom troops manually. Okay, and enable main party if it has disappeared, in case you have a bug. And of course, the tournament system is over here, uh, if you want to modify any things on that end. Then for difficulty, for difficulty, I usually like to play on a sweet spot. Neither too hard, neither too easy. Um, combat size on max, combat speed on fastest, campaign AI on poor because if you don't have campaign AI on poor, uh, the enemies uh, the enemies will replenish their troops and armies at a very unrealistic rate. So that's why I have campaign AI on poor. Combat AI on max because I want the my boys and the enemy AI to fight to their best of abilities. And then damage to friends, I keep it on easy. So no, there's normal, easy, and easiest. I keep it on easy, the middle option. 
damage to player the middle option lance control i don't utilize the lance but you want if you want some extra difficulty points you can put this on manual hard control attack directions by movement keys because i that's how i got accustomed to it and control block direction automatically but if you want to practice for multiplayer i recommend that you uh, get accustomed to i think in multiplayer is by mouse movement not sure not sure but i think that's it and those are my favorite uh difficulty options that i usually play with Whew, it's not too easy it's not too hard and just the right right amount just right right amount of difficulty and everything although you can you can kind of bump those up a bit bump those up a bit because you have the combat abilities that really makes things a little bit easier